Hi, it's Rob here, and I've been thinking about something for months, months and months and months. It has been whirring around my head. And it was the CEO of Netflix, the founding CEO of Netflix, um, who I was having a discussion with. I interviewed him for my podcast, The Disruptive Entrepreneur. You can find that in one of the previous episodes. And he said to me, all ideas are rubbish. Every idea is a bad idea. And I wouldn't say it triggered me, but it definitely got me questioning myself and the way I run my team, my staff, my company, companies. And that's because I actually have relatively good self-worth that I have good ideas. Um, I come up with ideas that have made a difference, that have changed the direction of our um, business. We've pivoted from buying single lets to HMOs to commercial conversions to having a property training business, a deal sourcing business, a podcast media agency, a social media agency, business courses, my, my podcast itself, my supporter program, my stars program, my Patreon program. And... and These have all come from ideas, ideas that uh, I hadn't had before I had. Now, Sanjay on this live is saying everything is about execution. I actually don't agree with that, Sanjay. And I say this with kindness, not to um, say that you're wrong, but just to challenge this, because this isn't actually the point I'm going to make. But if we say everything is about execution, then you say nothing is about ideas. But you have to have the idea to execute. So my point is going to be that uh, it is not going to be that uh, ideas are nothing and execution is everything because you can execute the wrong ideas. You can execute bad ideas. My point is going to be that an idea is rubbish until proven to be good. Uh, And most people think Hmm, Actually, let me correct myself here. I was going to say, most people think their ideas are good. But people who think their ideas are good think their ideas are good. There's a lot of people who think they don't have good ideas. But I think it helps both sides. So I always get frustrated and I'm managing this. I'm getting much better at this. So let's say I always used to get frustrated. When I'd come up with ideas and I'd be like, yeah, that's a genius idea. It wasn't that. It was just I was high on coffee or excited. And then I'd have people around me, my wife, my business partner, my MD, my team members, my event managers, my trainers. They'd be like, oh, you can't do that. That's not a good idea. That's not going to work. And I don't know if you can relate to feeling like you bring solutions, 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 and everyone else just brings problems, problems, problems. And I misunderstood this. I felt like people were poo-pooing my creativity. They weren't. They were just showing me the downside of me only seeing the upside of an idea. And then I would think that they are raining on my parade and ruining my energy and my enthusiasm and my passion. And often people come to me, oh, Rob, I need this help. Give us some ideas. I'm struggling with this. They're bringing problems. And then I bring idea after idea after idea and they go, oh, no, that won't work. And how are you going to do that? And that's never going to work. And uh, that's not practical. That's not realistic. And that used to frustrate me. Uh, and then Mark Randolph, the founding CEO of Netflix, and I think I was coming to this conclusion naturally, got me thinking. Now, from now on, I would like you to consider thinking it like this. And I've certainly thought about this for the last maybe two or three years. It doesn't matter who starts the idea, creates the idea or owns the idea. It doesn't matter if people shoot down your ideas. What matters is you keep coming up with them. They're tested. And then the ones that work are scaled up and the ones that don't work are either scaled back or they're retested. So what Mark Randolph meant when he said all ideas are crap. What he meant was nothing is a good idea until it's been incubated, tested and proven. 
And that made me think, okay, so I had this naive perception that I have a lot of good ideas. When in reality, I have a lot of ideas. Now, having a lot of ideas is good if you need to create new solutions. Having a lot of ideas is bad if you don't because you get distracted, overwhelmed, you overwhelm other people. So I now know I'm good at coming up with ideas and I'm good at creating potential solutions to problems. What I'm actually maybe not that good at is knowing if they're a good idea or not. And here's why. And this takes some humility to say this. But if I'm honest, as a percentage, most of my ideas are not implementable. They're either not good or the timing is wrong or they're not practical. And so it's like, was it Wayne Gretzky said, you know, you um, miss 100% of the shots you never take. And if you look often at strikers in different sports, um, you know, people who take shots, their conversion percentage is really low. But often their shot volume is high. So I've come to realise that actually being good at ideas is being good at the volume of relevant ideas at the right time. And not overly owning them or being um, like, oh, well, that was my idea. We've got to go with this because this is my idea. And not being precious about the idea. And then the next thing is allowing that idea to be incubated, tested, measured, improved uh, and iterated. Uh, and, and actually, Netflix in the early days did mail order, you know, DVDs. And of course, that was pr- quickly proven to be a dead model. So they stopped doing that. They took out late fees. And so their original idea is not what it is now. And had they been too precious, my precious, about their idea, then they wouldn't have pivoted into the correct model. And actually, whilst over the last sort of year or two, I've started to have some introspection and maybe a little bit more humility about my idea generation and and my um, creativity of creating good ideas. What I have realised I have done is whether it's my idea or someone else's idea, I've allowed it to grow. I haven't been to, ah, this is the idea and it has to be rigid and you can't change it. It can't become a hybrid. It's just this. But actually, most of my business models are a hybrid. They started with an idea. They were developed. Other people added their thoughts and processes um, and experience on. So now I believe a good idea is an idea that is allowed to be tested, incubated, improved. Other people can take it, hybridize it, improve it, and then you can let it go. Now, a lot of people, they want the, they want the credit for the idea. That was my idea. Well, honestly, it wasn't. I know for every idea I've come up with, I've been inspired by someone. I mean, this whole podcast episode, this will go on the Disruptive Entrepreneur podcast, and live stream is about a conversation I had with the CEO of Netflix. So it's not even my, the, the seed of the content here is not even my idea. And that's okay. And I, you know, as long as you don't pretend that it's your idea. I don't have to own this idea. I just have to discuss this idea with someone who's very good at creating ideas. Because actually he's a, 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 a startup founder of many businesses, Mark Randolph is, not just um, Netflix. Um, and then allow it to help you create, the, sow, sow the seeds of ideas and allow them to be nurtured. So my podcast, The Disruptive Entrepreneur, started as me doing 30-minute episodes. Then as it scaled, I interviewed guests. Then as it scaled, I did caffeine casts. Then as it scaled, I did Rob's rants. Then as it scaled, I set up a second podcast, The Money Podcast. We've interviewed so many billionaires now and got so many lined up. I'm even considering having a billionaire's podcast. So I, 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 the idea is to do a podcast, but that wasn't even my idea. I mean, I was listening to Joe Rogan, Tim Ferriss, Trailblazers, Masters of Scale. Uh, podcasting wasn't my idea. In fact, it wasn't Tim Ferriss's idea or Joe Rogan's idea or anyone else's idea that had a podcast. So I think we've got to let go of owning the idea and being precious and 
uptight and rigid about it. I see people all the time going, oh, someone copied me, someone copied me directly, they copied me, they, they called their course the same name. They, no, 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 no. They probably didn't copy you. And if they did, they're inspired by you. And okay, they haven't quite yet got the elegance to give the credit to the people who originated it. But let's be honest, you didn't come up with that idea. Um, the names for all my courses, they're pretty original because we've hybridised them, but I didn't come up with them. And actually, whilst I say they're original, there's only like 15 or 20 words you can use in the courses that we have, so they're not actually that original. So um, what I like to do with ideas is to create hybrids. So I'm inspired by music. You might see here I have this um, a love for hi-fi and vinyl. So I listen to music to get inspired. Um, I love fashion, so I watch fashion documentaries and very interested in fashion to get inspired. Love watches and watchmaking and um, podcasts and autobiographies and audio books and studying competitors and studying other business niches and studying other successful entrepreneurs. I'm going to meet the, um, the founder, the CEO of Grenade. Obviously, they're a huge company at the moment. I've got some billionaires lined up for my podcast. And if I have really good, interesting conversations with them to spark my own creativity and energy and the synapses in my brain going, and it regurgitates out ideas in the form of rehashed and hybridized discussions, debates, problems. Ultimately, a lot of ideas are just solutions to problems, but sometimes you're solving the wrong problem or you're solving the problem in the wrong way. Now, there's people like Steve Jobs and people would say, oh, he's just a genius of ideas. But the touchscreen technology was not his. The, the, the streaming of music iTunes idea was not his. So I think what he was good, good at doing was not necessarily coming up with his own ideas, but he was good at taking an existing idea, but it wasn't working or it could be bigger or more user friendly or more intuitive or, you know, have a wider use. I think that was his great skill. Now, some people say there are no new ideas under the sun. I'll also challenge that. I think that there are. To say there are no ide new ideas under the sun completely turns off the part of your brain that would come, try and come up with new ideas. But I think what people say when they say that is we're all influenced and inspired by something. We're influenced by the weather. We're influenced by people we speak to. We're influenced by the, the TV we watch, the media we put in our head, the, the influencers and thought leaders that we follow. All right, now I've got more thoughts on this, but I need to tell you a couple of things. So the first thing is, if you hit me up with uh, 500 stars on this live right now, you can get a shout out for your business, your podcast, your website, your brand, uh, whatever it is. Uh, and Adam Sargison did that and got four leads. And he reckons that could be worth a few thousand pounds to him just by um, being able to share his link and his um, uh, offering on my page, which reaches 142,000 people. So 500 stars gets you a shout out there. Add 500 stars onto it, 1,000, and you can have your own unique post in the Disruptive Entrepreneur Community, which has 18,200 and something members. So this is very, very, this is an idea that I um, came up with, but I was inspired by some of the other star providers. So I'm in the Stars Beta Facebook group. They're talking about doing shout outs. So shout out is, you know, who's, who have we got on live at the moment? We've got Susan. Susan batty so I'd shout out her. Manisha Ludor, I'd shout out her. Irene Watson, I'd shout out her. But I thought, just shouting someone out, that's nice. It's nice to hear your name. Hmm, but is that really val fair exchange and value? And I thought, well, instead of giving me stars just to get your name shouted out, what about if you've got your company or your product or your brand shouted out? What about if you could generate leads and income from it? So that's an, I th that's an example of, I didn't create the idea. I didn't create the stars program. Um, Facebook have given me and 19 other people in the world the functionality to beta test it. I went in and discussed ideas with the beta testers. I gave them some of my suggestions because I'm, I'm, I'm probably more entrepreneurial than many of them. Um, some, and many of them do um, maybe more um, wider scale thing like they, they talk about makeup and they, and they do their hair on the lives. And um, that being said, I got some entrepreneurial ideas from them. Um, and then just through that discussion and debate and encouragement and sharing of ideas of successes and, and um, obstructions, then you come up with some new concept. Now, I'm probably the only person in the world, or at least I've got to be one of the only five people in the world, that you can go onto my live stream. You can hit me up with 500 stars, which is just $5 to you. And you can get your business, your product, your service promoted to 141,800 people, potentially. Now, that's more innovative than Google AdWords. Because to reach 142,000 impressions would cost you not $5, but $5,000 or $50,000. And if this becomes common and a big thing, everyone's going to be doing it. So that could be deemed as very innovative, but it's just a test. Every, this is what, going back to all ideas are crap. Every idea should be tested, tested by the market, 
test it on your um, software, your systems. You think something's a good idea, but your market, your audience, your followers, your community members, they, may, they just may not go for it. So being too bullish about your ideas being good could mean you become myopic to giving your community what they want. The next thing is I love to um, ask my community what they want. And um, I'll tell you something I do believe I'm good at. And by the way, there's plenty of things I'm not good at. Yoga, <laughs> meditation, uh, etc. cetera. Um, but something I, I think I am good at is asking people for ideas and getting opinion and experience from lots of different types of people and allowing them to go into my brain and filter through everything that I know and then come up with something that A, is probably quite unique, B, has utility, C, has demand. And I therefore know if I put that into the market, there's likely to be good demand because I've asked the people who are likely to buy it what they want. And then they feel included in the, in the idea. It's almost crowdsourced, crowdfunded even. And so I know I'm really good at that. And one of the reasons I'm really good at that is because I, I know if you try and come up with all ideas on your own, you struggle. So if I said to you, right, get pen and paper out, uh, sit in a dark room uh, and come up with uh, 50 brilliant ideas for a new product or service, you're going to struggle. But if I said to you, go in communities and forums where, where um, people in your niche frequent, discuss, debate, argue, go to events where people buy and sell and exchange um, the products and services that you do, talk to them, talk to prospects, clients, refunders, complainers, critics, haters, talk to everyone, get a, a balanced view of your products and services, run polls, ask people what they want in different orders, and then come up with 10 or 20 or 50 ideas. It's going to be much easier. So in reality, ideation is collation. It is, um, I was trying to think of all words ending in shun, but that's restricting myself. It's collating, it's listening, it's engaging, it's allowing multiple viewpoints to assimilate in your own, um, through your own filters of your own experience. Every time I launch a book, I will tell you the five book ideas I've got. Which one do you want me to write next? Usually one or two get dis, um, significantly higher votes than the rest. That's where I'm going with the book because I know there's already demand. Um, I also uh, put a poll recently in the Disruptive Entrepreneur Facebook group um, to ask, um, if we were to run an event or some kind of training, what would you like uh, the most? One was on social media, one was on mar marketing, one was on business and, and startups. And I'll watch that poll, I'll engage in that poll. And then if I'm considering running a new event, I'm going to go based on what you've asked. And then I'll ask you, what kind of content would you want? What kind of speakers would you want? Um, you know, what... what how could we make the event different, unique, not the same as all the others? What do you not like about other events? What do you like about our events? And then we go to different events and we pick some of the best bits and then we run our own. And we take our feedback and we, we sometimes accidentally um, come across some um, ideas. I was talking to Ryan Pinnock yesterday, who's on this live. We were having a great discussion and we were talking about how you can't be overly protective and, um, you know, overly owning of ideas because actually creativity has to involve mistakes, or at least great creativity does. So um, Kellogg's um, cornflakes was a mistake. It was a, a Petri dish of something left overnight. So was penicillin. Um, the post-it note was a failed glue. Lee Evans was a failed um, musician. He actually tried to, um, he, um, Ryan told me this, I've got to watch the documentary on him, but you know, he went to this, um, I think, talent music show and played the piano and just was terrible and they all laughed at him and that's how he became a comedian. Um, so you have to allow mistakes and you know how water just flows and it makes its own way. Well, sometimes you have to allow ideas to do that too. So Hina, thank you for the thousand stars. Hina said, sometimes you can't sell in thousand batches. That's, send in thousand batches. That's okay. Send in two, 500 batches. Um, so you can get a shout out for your business, your podcast, your brand, your website, your Facebook group, whatever it is that you'd like. Okay. So um, let me summarize then. And if you're watching the replay, you can also just um, donate the stars and then you can just put a comment in below. So that is, all ideas are crap until they're proven, tested, incubated, iterated, hybridized, um, you know, multiple versions of them have been stress, stress tested and then um, scaled. If you overly own an idea, you can't allow it to flourish and, and, and create itself. You don't allow for random mistakes to create something new. If you, um, if you overly want to control and get the credit for an idea, it's it's probably not going to grow and giving other people credit for the idea will allow it to grow and, and, and grow its own legs and momentum. 
Don't take it personally when people say, oh, that idea is shit or that idea is not going to work. Because if you just believe that all ideas are rubbish until they're tested and proven and then they're great when, you know, you can join the dots back, then you're going to be more free, more open to having good ideas. Also, people who are really good ideas think all their ideas are good. They think people are being negative and dismissive, um, basically saying the ideas are not good. But people who are saying the ideas are not good are actually saying there's downside and have you stress tested this? And if you go with an idea that you think is good without being tested, and without being cri- critically um, reviewed and analysed, you could end up scaling something that could be a disaster, that could cost you millions in research and development or lost time or failed launches or failed companies. Hmm. All right, cool. So I hope you found that useful. Remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. I would ask you if you found this um, live stream and podcast useful that you could share it on your social media. I rarely ask people to share But um, I think, look, we could all do with having a more open mind to ideas. People who don't think there are good ideas can now realise, actually, an idea doesn't have to be good. Therefore, I can just put it forward. I don't have to be good at ideas. People who have good confidence and self-worth about having good ideas have to accept the fact that they're good at creating the idea, but they shouldn't overly own the idea. I believe all solutions to all business problems or personal problems are creativity, innovation, ideas that are tested, flexibility, pivoting. Um, And if if your business model is in times of great change, which um, one of my business models is, then that is a great opportunity to create new ideas and innovation and pivot and iterate and offer extra value and solve different problems. Um, Thank you, Samantha, for sharing. Thank you, uh, Jean-Luc, for sharing. Um, So you're one good idea away or you're one crap but well-tested idea away from your next six, seven or eight figures, from your next business model that started or scaled, um, from your next solution from your next partnership, collaboration, uh, and as such, um, I think we need to get more better, more free, more open, more um, collaborative about ideas. The best ideas I've ever had have only been the ideas that I've got the, the wheels in motion of. And then I borrowed that from someone else, of course, or I was inspired by it. And then, thank you, Deborah, for sharing. Thank you, Grant, for sharing. And then I chucked it to my team and they went, well, what about this? And what about this? And that's not going to work, but that's going to work. What about this? And, you know, it snowballed and it snowballed and it snowballed until we had something great and scalable. Um, Someone said here, great advice. I lost 50 to 100 K at a time on good ideas, but not enough research. The timing was bad. So good idea, wrong time. Good idea, not enough research. Good idea, not enough stress testing. That's why all ideas are crap, according to the CEO of Netflix. All right, so thank you all for sharing. I'm very grateful. If you haven't shared yet, please share and hit me up with 500 stars. You get a shout out for your business, your brand, your podcast, your website, your group on my page to 142,000 people. And if you hit me up with a thousand stars, which I see one of you have, then you can also put your own unique post promoting yourself, your bio, your website, your mission, your vision, your product in the disruptive entrepreneur community. Now, Adam did um, $5 worth of stars to me, got four leads he reckons going to generate in thousands of pounds worth of business maybe you could take that opportunity too. Um, This is just an idea at this stage. If it works, I'm scaling up. If it's crap, I tested it. I tried it. It didn't work. We move on. Um, You know, you've got to have more bad ideas to have good ideas. Ideas is a a volume thing. Um, It's a test, measure, fail. Test, measure, fail. Test, measure, succeed. Succeed, fail. Tweak. Test, measure, fail. Test, measure, tweak, succeed. So it's a constantly iterative Thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.